The views and opinions expressed on the following program do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of Nash Community College, the Board of Trustees of Nash Community College, or the North Carolina Community College oh, system. Sorry, did I break your concentration? Anything for my princess. I am serious. And don't call me shit. <laughs> Oh, look at that transition. Hey, how you guys doing? I'm Isaac Anderson. I am here. <laughs> but anyway, welcome to Big Bang Cinema. This is a show where we talk about movie news, movie reviews, and everything in between. And right over here, we have the man that's phone just rang, Hunter Baker, the man of two occupations in his name. Who's calling, man? His doctor. That's not correct. I know Hunter doesn't go to the doctor. I have no idea. Sounds good to me. Uh, uncertainty is just a part of life. But and speaking about uncertainty, over here we got Mr. Christopher Darkins. How you doing, man? Mouthful of food? What, what's the cuisine today? I say pretzels or oh. Skittles, either one. No, no snack? He's got plenty no, of snack. No, no snack. Oh, my goodness. He can't have no snack. <laughs> All right, well, Tyler, how you doing today, man? Tired. Tired? Bored. <laughs> bored? Very, so, very much so. Yeah. Well, speaking about tired and bored, Danny Boyle... It's probably going to be directing James Bond 25, according to some reports. I don't Danny know. Danny Boyle. Yeah, Danny Boyle, the director of uh, Sunshine, Slumdog Millionaire, um, you know, a lot of great movies. Um, Train Spotting. Um, oh, yeah, the one about heroin. Yes. Um, yeah, it's a big thing now that he's probably going to be directing. Heroin? No, he's not going to be oh. directing heroin. He's going to oh. be directing well, he said Bond 25. He said heroin's a big thing now. Well, I mean, it probably is. But. Uh, uh, what, what do you think about this, Tyler? I uh, don't care. I was banking on Norton. You're banking Norton? Yeah. Like Edward Norton? Yeah. On, on directing a film? Yeah. Okay, I think you probably mean Christopher Nolan. No, no, no Edward Norton. Edward Norton. I think you're wrong I, in Have that. you seen The Incredible Hulk? That man wrote that entire movie. Yeah, and nobody wants to work with him again. Because he's a terrible person to work with. I just want to say Edward Norris because you just come right out of the blue. Okay. Why don't I get Spike Lee to do it? Uh, I don't think that tone was fit. But, uh, what do you guys think about this? Do you guys, uh, you guys ever seen Sunshine, uh, Song Down Millionaire or anything? No, I haven't seen it. You ever seen okay. Train Spot? Well, you guys have no help. What's James Bond? <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's about the world's worst spy who tells everybody who his name is. Uh, well, I, no, mean, I just can't believe there's 25 of them. That's what seems amazing well, about that story to me. I know one of them's not, not two or three of them aren't official. Mm. Well, I mean, I think these are our official ones, though. Oh. Mm. But, I mean, um, but yeah, I think this is actually a really interesting choice. Danny they, Boyle also did 127 Hours with James Franco, in oh, case you don't know. Oh, I almost forgot about the entire movie. I know who James Franco is. Yes, you do. Yeah. Uh, I saw a poster for that movie. You did? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he cut his own arm off. I watched it. based that. on a true story. Uh, but um, yeah, it is actually. Mm -hmm. It's based on. It doesn't mean it's completely the true story. But yeah, I. So is Pineapple Express. I uh, don't know about that. But I think it's actually a pretty good choice for James Bond. I think uh, his tone is actually going to no, be something no, that no. we haven't experienced. They with just it. scrap the whole thing. And just Wait, who's Seth Rogen? No, no, uh, Danny Boyle. I mean, to, to act as James Bond. Uh, I don't think Seth Rogen would fit. I think he'd be a fantastic James Bond. I think so. He would too. I, think I, I don't would think be. he would. Chris, have you, like, have you seen any of Danny Boyle's work? You James Franco as, uh, as Q. Yeah, go ahead. Turn your mic on. No. No, okay. You ever seen a James Bond movie? Ever, ever seen a James Bond movie? Yes. Yes, I have. Okay, do you like the Daniel Craig Bond movies then? Yeah. Bond, okay, so, um, yeah, I, I think this might be Daniel Craig's last <laughs> movie as James Bond, though. Oh, I, I'm glad. Like, I just... Why are you glad? Because no. no one stays Bond forever. No one stays Bond forever, but I really like Daniel Craig's version well, of Bond. I'm ready for Idris Elba. Idris, uh, that's not going to happen. That's definitely going to happen. That is not going to happen. I, I want it to happen. But anyway, Danny Boyle uh, directing this. Again, I think it's a really interesting choice. Danny Boyle has a really unique style. If you've ever seen Train Spotting, the yeah. way he kind of puts those scenes together, the and way the, he. And the Iggy Pop music. Well, uh, maybe not so much the Iggy Pop music. In the same way with 127 Hours, I think the characterization in that can really lend itself to James Bond, you know, um, kind of making you care for somebody that you might not know too much about, but slowly kind of get to know more about during the film, have a real humanity about them, even though they might seem kind of, you know, um, like someone British. you couldn't relate to you. British. Well, I mean, m more than that. Also, he knows how to, you know, he d knows how to direct an action scene. Wait, seen is, Sunshine. Is, is he British? 
I believe Danny Boyle is British, yes. Uh, okay. But, um, yeah, his characterization was Slumdog Millionaire, 127 hours. I think that he can pull this off. I think well, it'd be something really interesting. I didn't really like Slumdog Millionaire. Oh, why not? Well, I hate Who Wants to Be a Millionaire in general, so I really didn't like the movie. <laughs> oh, whatever. I don't think it's a good show. Well, speaking about probably not a good Regis show. On it. Terrence Malick, uh, oh. the director of The Tree of Life and a bunch of other lofty movies you didn't see, directed a movie life. a while back that they put clips together for. It's going to be called Thy Kingdom Come. It's going to star Javier Bardem as a priest. It's from a, a movie that was shot a few years ago with Ben Affleck. It's called To the Wonder, I think. I, I, I'm not sure. Dude, you're shooting in the dark over here, man. No, To the Wonder. It's called To the Wonder. You are shooting in the dark. We have no idea. I have no idea what's going on here. No, well, I, I, for, I'll, I'll, I have first time I've ever heard this guy's name before. Terrence Malick? First time. How in the world have you never heard of Terrence Malick? You like movies so much. I, I don't think I like these movies. Terrence Malick was a big director in the 70s, and uh, he had a little bit of a dry spot during the, uh, you know, a, a, a little bit there, but uh, he kept movies coming out. The Tree of Life was nominated for, uh, you know, nominated for Best Picture. Tree of Life. Yeah. Brad Pitt? Knight of Cups? You remember Knight of Cups? Last year? No? Man, what have you been doing? No, uh, this movie is actually really interesting because Javier Bardem, in the To the Wonder movie, he actually played a priest, and they actually shot a bunch of stuff in, um, as him as the character of the priest going around to Americans and just talking to them and like trying to talk to them about their lives as the character. And so it's kind of like a blend between you know real and you know stage stuff, and it's kind of it's a really unique concept. It's going to be uh, coming to South by Southwest early. Uh, but pretty early in the festival, I think. I don't know. Um, but I, I'm excited to see this. I think it's a really cool concept. Um, I've never really seen anything quite like this with somebody playing a character, unless it's like Bruno or like, you know, one of the Sasha Baron Cohen movies. Um, I think this is something really, really cool. And especially with like such a high caliber actor like Javier Bardem, that's really going to show you like a really different side to these people. And maybe they don't even know it's fake. Maybe they think this is like a real thing. And, and, but still, they kind of open up like they would, like, went to a real person. But I don't know. Do you guys have any opinions on so this? So they're exploiting people who don't know they're being exploited. Uh, no, I wouldn't say so. Yeah, My question so. is, is, like, is it fake if they think it's real? Like, if they're having a real experience, even if he's playing a character, does that make it fake? That's, that was my thing, yeah. Mm. So I'm, they're really getting this kind of catharticism from this fake character that Catharsis. Javier Bardem is playing. Catharsis. Whatever. Um, but it's, you know, he's playing a character. Lethargy. But, but he's, he, and, I felt that right but now. at the same time, he's not. He's, like, really relating to these people. It's really interesting. Chris, what do you think? You know who Javier Bardem, Bardem is? is? Mm. You know how Javier Bardem is? You ever seen uh, No Country for Old Men? You ever heard of Jeffrey Dean Morgan? It's his brother. I yeah. don't think that's He's true. He's that guy. Yeah, it's that dude right there. Uh, he was also in the well, I know critically that. acclaimed I the Mother. Picture up there. Oh, uh, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, he was in Mother. That's all you got to know. Mm. Yeah. But, um, yeah, Tyler, you not feeling this? Not at all. Why not? I just don't want to see people exploited on, on, on movies. I, I don't know this is completely Ex exploiting them, though. Exploiting Because they for signed cash. up for it. Like, they wanted to get filmed, you know. Uh, well, I mean, it, it's, they probably have, I thought they were, were going to come talk to a priest or something to film it, but, like, it's, they're talking to Javier Bardem, and it's just, I don't know, it's like, it's like exploiting people's problems. I, it and it sort sounds kind of boring to me. I, I don't know. I mean, Terrence Malick is known for making boring films. Oh, but, uh, oh, that's why I haven't seen them. There we go. But, I mean, a lot of them are kind of, like, really interesting. They're almost dreamlike. Knight of Cups, I was not big on Knight of Cups. Uh, it's literally just Christian Bale walking into a room looking lofty, and then that's about it. Um, yeah, Christian Bale's in that movie. Oh, these art house films. Uh, they're art house films. Oh, but, I mean, rough. this one's a little different. It's a different concept. I, I'm curious to see how it turned out. If it's more like, look at these stupid people. Look at how crazy their lives are. Or is it really them trying to like get to the root of their problems and actually try to help them in a way that's also cinematic and like it's just it's something I haven't seen before I'm kind of excited to see that but um, yeah speaking about excited to see that oh lord oh let me st let me check up with this one I've been looking forward to this since 1995 uh, okay well, what is it the Lion King reboot is coming out and it's using the four original songs from the soundtrack only four it's probably the four only people really remember which are probably what? Uh, the Pennsylvania song. Pennsylvania song? Yeah, the, the one that like Elton John did. Pennsylvania. Blah, 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 blah. Wow, that, that's a joke <laughs> I haven't heard before yeah. at all. You haven't heard that before? No. Not at all. And some, uh, uh, yeah, that one. 
All right, your bambata is really good, sir. Ah, uh, thank you. I've been practicing. Uh, what bambazo? Ben oh, well, I'm just calling it the song from the beginning of the yeah, movie. Yeah, it's, it's the, it, 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 the it, it, circle it, of life is what it's called. Oh, that's what it's called. Yeah. That's precisely you what it's called. Ignorant uh, cracker. I, uh, I, 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 call, I call it that, the Elton John Mimbaza. Well, and then I, I think they're probably going to do that Can You Feel the Love Tonight, the one that everybody knows too. They're going to do Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata, that's going to be a deaf. And what was the last one going to be? I, I'm not sure. Um, do you oh, going to have Scar's villain song? Can't wait to be king. Can't wait to be king. Yes. Maybe. Like, Maybe. I don't know. Do you think the new ones are going to be any better than the ones they had before? Uh, probably. It's probably going to be, uh, I don't know. You really can't top Lion King on this I would on love to see Seth Rogen in this film. I think he actually is in this movie. Yeah, I know. Like, did you look it up? No, no, but we've talked about it before. I, yeah. I think he is. Yeah, he is in this movie. Yeah, he is. He in also I think he plays to be James Bond, though. That's all but I'm saying. No. Yeah. Please tell me Pumbaa is James Franco. I don't think Pumbaa is James Franco. Ah. I forgot who Puma was. but um, He's the pig. I, I don't think so. Oh, well, I no. mean, in in life or like just like in the movie? <laughs> no, uh, uh, in the movie, like let let Pumbaa be James Franco. I I don't know if that's gonna happen. The cast, and we talked about the cast a yeah, little we bit, did, but but um, but yeah, I I don't know if they can top the original music for it. Either way, like e even if they make music that's infinitely better, which is probably an impossibility, than what they did before, I think people are still gonna complain they're not the original songs. In what way do you find the new music as being infinitely better? Uh, I don't know. It connects with more people. It hits a well, little bit. I heard Beyonce is going to be doing some of these songs. Well, I mean, I, again, I, I don't think that's going to happen. There's a certain kind of quality to the music from 1994 that I don't think is going to be topped. I think now it's going to be very computerized, very quantized, and very auto-tuned. Let me ask you a question. What if everybody hates it, and, and then 50 years from now everybody thinks they're the greatest songs ever written? What if it's just really ahead of its time? I don't know, man. Like a Dreamcast. <laughs> Is the Dreamcast ever going to come back? Leave us a comment. It's Studio already come back. NCC. It's already come back in technology. No, Chris is over there, the the mm. computer expert of us, shaking his ponytail. Mm. So I'm, I'm thinking no on that. But um, but yeah, um, I I don't think it's going to probably be like uh, you know for those that don't know, John Favreau, the director of uh, Iron Jungle Man, Jungle Book. Yeah, and Jungle Book um, is going to be directing mm. this. Mm. I don't know if the the new music's going to top it. I don't think they're trying to. I just think they want to put out something that's going to make money. Um, I think it's pretty much the premise of this. They want to sell you a product, and I don't think they care about the music as much as the original one. But who knows? I mean, the music might actually be really cool, really interesting, but probably not. Do you think it's going to be live action singing and dancing, since it's a live action? Well, it's going to be live action CGI animals. Probably like a so they're for it, not live. So action. are they going to be singing it themselves, or is it just? Gonna I think it's music? probably going to be people singing for them, but it's going to be like you know. The, uh, like they're gonna have scenes of like people dancing and stuff like that in in the movie. Yes, like the actual Lion King movie. <gasps> Hold on, it's not gonna be people in masks running around, is it? No, it's not well, the like musical. The, 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 that terrible, musical like, awesome. on, on the Broadway. That stage. terrible Broadway play I saw. But yeah, I think it's probably gonna be in the vein of like the Jungle Book or something like that, where it's gonna have the musical numbers spread out throughout. Dude, what if it blows your mind? Like at the end, it shows like they meet up with like uh, some of the characters from the Jungle Book. It turns out, same universe. Do you guys think that Pixar will follow suit and start making live action versions of some of their films? I don't know if I'd want to see that though. Well, I, I want to see a live action up. I'd lo really enjoy that. I'd see live action. That'd be cars. more depressing. Yeah, extremely. Be really depressing. I was about to say a live action up would just be sad. Live yeah, action yeah. cars wouldn't that be maximum overdrive? Pretty much. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be death proof. <laughs> Uh, have you ever seen Maximum Overdrive? Yeah, uh, the one that, that'll scare the, uh, the oh, yeah. Russian satellite. Yeah. Scare the pants off of you uh, by the Stephen King one? Scare the pants off of you. Yeah, the terrible one? Speaking about the terrible one, uh, Pinocchio is apparently going to get a live action reboot. Pinocchio. Well, I've seen so many live action Pinocchios that were terrible. Uh, but what do you mean yeah. by a terrible one? Oh, well, I mean, it was just a joke. It was just a joke transition. Yeah, well, you haven't seen it. You, know, you think Pinocchio is terrible? What? No, 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 it was a joke. Is it because he's an joke. Italian character? Uh, yeah, speaking about Italians, uh, Paul King, the director of Paddington 2, is going to be directing Paddington, uh, uh, not Paddington 2, he's going to be directing Pinocchio, the other P movie. Um, the director of Paddington 2 will be directing Paddington 2. <laughs> yeah, how about that? Mm. No, Paul <laughs> King's uh, British, I think. But, um, yeah. Uh, do you want to see a uh, live-action Pinocchio movie directed by the guy that directed Paddington 2? At this point, I'm up for anything. Man. How do you guys think Javier Bardem is going to do his Geppetto? <laughs> that uh, might actually happen. I can't discount that. No, no, no. Uh, who, like, who would you want to see play Pinocchio? In Seth Rogen. Martin I, Freeman. I just have one comment about 
having the same director as Paddington too. Okay. If they have a prison scene, I'm going to flip. I'm, I I would too. I'm going to flip. I would too. But um, yeah, Paul King is a he's one of the only like really like the wholesome kid directors out there today. Like he really knows how to strike that tone in between kind of the serious and the children's kind of thing. You think he's going to carry over something that his actors from Paddington? I'm sure he will. Every director does. I mean, he's going to have a say in the casting for sure. Well, Samuel Jackson being. You this think one. Stanley Hawkins is going to be in this? I think Samuel Jackson's going to be in this. Samuel Jackson's not in the Paddington movies. Well, he, he he's he's in every franchise. I, I, I don't I don't think he's going to be in this. Even he's, though he probably has a contract with Disney somehow. He's going to be in it. Uh, but yeah, he's um, in a lot of Disney movies. I'm not sure how much I want to see a Pinocchio reboot. Um, I barely cared about it the first time. I enjoyed it the first time because it's part of my cultural heritage. I, I mean, I am one percent Italian, sir. I'm you're you're ninety nine percent puppet. But yes, um, <laughs> I have I have a puppet. For, I'm a puppet with the studio. But um. But yeah, I, I'm not excited to see a live action reboot. I don't know. Uh, it, it'll make it'll get a 74% Rotten Tomatoes, and it'll be fine. But Paul King is a good director. I'm really excited to see what he does with it. Uh, I imagine we'll see some big name actors. Who knows? Javier Bardem will probably be Geppetto, but I'm probably banking on someone like uh, William H Macy, someone that looks a little bit more sad in the face. Isaac. Whenever you think a movie is going to be average, you always resort to 74% on Rotten. Because that's Tomatoes. average. That's average. Like 64 to 74 percent. Mark well, my words. Well, what other movie no, did I say recently? That's. Well, well that, they're, 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 that's when they're not right. Well, that's, that's when they're not bad, but like they're not that great either. But that, like they got to well, strike by, that medium. By like technicality of the system, average is like fifty percent technically. Not yes, really. but I mean, well, that, that, that then it becomes rotten. But then everyone's gonna think it's really good, but in reality, it's probably just it, gonna it, be an it's average so, it's movie. Like, it's like you got to make it's half Hard rotten. To explain. Are you still gonna eat it? I like movies with like grasshoppers tomatoes. in them. If you had a, a, a like gummy James worm that was peach. half rotten, would you eat it? Gummy worms don't rot. Um, uh, but what? Oh, any movie well, that's, that's, that's forget all about all that. But guys, thanks so much for watching so far. If you have any questions, concerns, uh, and like inclinations, that th things you want us to do, please leave a comment at Studio Sixty Seven uh, NCC on Facebook. It's uh, or youtube.com slash Nashcom College. Just another good one. Or if you listen to 89.1, leave a comment on the Facebook page. Let us know. You want to be on a movie? Please tell us which one. <laughs> I don't know about that. But uh, guys, we're going to take a really quick break. Mm -hmm. When we come back, we're going to have a fun segment talking about cool runnings and Blades of Glory. Oh, Lord. Ooh. Oh, have mercy. All right. We'll be right back, guys. Want to earn college credits while still enjoying your summer? Nash Community College offers courses and degrees entirely online. Whether you're entering a university as a freshman or you're already there, get your required courses out of the way with Nash Online. Take university transferable math, English, psychology, sciences, and more for half the cost. Save time, save money, and experience online service like none other. Now enrolling for summer, visit nashcc.edu slash online to reserve your spot. Did you know Nash Community College offers 12 degree programs entirely online? Are you interested in information technology? Explore information technology systems, network management, system security, healthcare informatics, or web design and administration. These two-year programs are only a few of the online associate degrees offered through Nash Online. Students receive the same quality instruction and resources as on-campus students without ever stepping foot on Nash's campus. Learn more about Nash Online today at online.nashcc.ed. Hey, welcome Sam. back to Big Bang Cinema. I'm Isaac Anderson. I am Tyler. Uh, so, time for our segment of the week. And uh, for those that don't know, uh, oh, the Winter oh, Olympics are going on oh, right now. And North Korea has nothing. Well, I mean, that's just in general. But, I mean, <laughs> no, that's, we're going to talk a little bit about some winter sports movies. So, winter sports movies. Um, how many are there? Did, uh, like, uh, there was like a handful. When I say a handful, I could literally hold them in my hand. <laughs> it's like DVD wise. Got like Ice Princess. We got a. Um, oh, uh, we got Ice Castles. D two, the Mighty Ducks. You know. Mm hmm. Uh, but the ones I, that we decided to um, look at and watch and kind of talk oh, about right now. The, the passable ones. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, there's a lot of bad ones. Um, but that, let's talk about Cool Runnings. Cool Runnings, very good. The John Disney Candy, film Cool Runnings. Dougie Doug. Uh, but uh, from the Jamaican team uh, that went to the Winter Olympics and did, well, uh, were part of the bobsledding team. Yeah. And it's a true story. It's based on a true story. John Candy wasn't there. And, and he's preparing them for the Olympics, and it is hilarious. All right. For those that don't know, uh, tell, tell us a little bit about this movie, like uh, besides, the, besides the stuff that we talked about. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, they, uh, they, they, are, they are really not ready for it because how, how many bobsledding teams, I mean, how many, how many 
how much snow you think is in Jamaica? It's none. None at all. So I mean, these people have no experience. So, but he's an he's kind of an expert, and he's trying to get them ready for the Olympics. And it's just like like all these weird methods he has them do, and it's just and it's just they they're not getting it. But eventually, you know, it's like all sports movies, they get it. At the yeah. end, they get ready. They do, you know. They I think he trades them the bathtub, and they lay in the bathtub, and out. And this is the part everybody remembers shows them doing the pull ups. And then, you know, and then it shows like John Candy holding them so they can do the pull ups on it. And it was just, it was, it was, it was a good movie. This gotta be one of John Candy's last movies. Uh, yeah, because he died, he died of like congestive heart failure. Not yeah, I mean, yeah. he, um, uh, it's really sad because he was such a funny guy. I mean, oh, and Dougie Doug was, yeah, they're Dougie Doug. <laughs> uh, which one is your favorite character in this? Dougie Doug is my favorite Doug, character. Dougie Doug, I Dougie you said Doug, his name like five times. Dougie I mean. Doug is my favorite character in any movie I'm watching. Okay, so, um, like, what kind of makes this better than a whole lot of the other winter sports movies? Because it's, um, uh, it had a lot of cu cultural clash into it, and, it yeah. and the humor was actually really good. I mean, like, when's the last thing you seen a John Candy movie? Like, this was, was terrible. But a, a, a big part about it is John Candy, Candy kind of carried the movie on his shoulders a little bit, but, I mean, he's like, he's like, he's, he's a comedic godfather, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, I can understand that, and also, I mean, it's just kind of like a quirky concept. Yeah. Like, I can already hear the voiceover in the trailer now. Yeah. These four Jamaicans never did anything in snow in their life until they became part of a bobsledding team. Now they're with John Candy and do the Winter Olympics. Dougie Doug stars in Cool Running. Wow, you you ruined that trailer. Uh, I'm, I'm watching the trailer. Actually. I, I can tell you. You're face this way. Face the camera. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a good movie. It's a good trailer. I know too. you've seen it though. You've seen it, but um, but yeah, this one's got a lot of heart to it, man. Also, it Hans Zimmer did the score for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how about that, Mr. Hans Zimmer? The guy he also did the score for the Lion King. The Lion King as well. That's crazy. And he, he done literally everything since. Mm -hmm. um, but um, but yeah, it's playing on TV now. People are replaying this all the time. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Like, do you think this would hold up? I haven't watched it in a very long time. It would hold up. It would hold up. I mean, there's a lot of Jamaican stereotypes in it, but I mean, it's still pretty funny. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I really mean, good. I, I watched a little clip of it right before the show. It's very, it looks like the 80s, but it's like early 90s. It's early 90s. Got the music playing behind that. It's got the text yeah. coming up there. It's like multicolored. Looks like the Taco Bell for the yeah. 90s. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, who can hate Cool Runnings, you know? Oh, very good movie. And Tom talked about a little bit of a different um, tone of this film, but it's definitely one of my favorites. It's it, Blades it, of Glory. It was a silly comedy. The silly comedy. Blades of Glory. Uh, oh, it was good with uh, Will Ferrell and John, John Heater. One of the last movies I've seen John Heater in. He, I think he's done voice work after that. He did uh, Surf's Up. You know that animated movie everyone loved? <laughs> But yeah, I mean, the premise of this movie is Will Ferrell and John Heater are both figure skaters, and uh, they kind of get into a fight and they get banned from the whole sport. And but they they, they, they can only come in as as a, as a couple. As a couple, and then it's like this loophole in the system where they can compete together. So Craig T. Nelson trains them to work together. And he he develops a a thing called the Iron Lotus that he they, uh, he brought to North Korea. But the only problem is that everybody does it gets their heads cut off. But he realized the problem was the weight difference. So it'd be a, it had to be two men to do it. Yeah, well, um, and, and if you don't know, the Iron Lotus is a move where someone gets tossed in the air and another guy swings and does like a somersault with the skates right above your head as you come down. Yeah. And usually the person gets his head cut off. It's totally ridiculous. Yes. Oh, um, Mr. Feeney was in this too. I forgot Mr. Feeney. Oh, yeah, Mr. Feeney is in it. Mr. Feeney, yeah, there he is. I knew he looked familiar. But, um... But yeah, I mean, and, and it's kind of the clash of the characters. Uh, Will Ferrell just plays kind of like an almost Steven Tyler Perry kind of no, guy. He plays like Will Ferrell in this movie. Yeah, but I mean, his character is like Steven Tyler Perry. Yeah. Like really kind of like, you know, fashion, like scarves and, you know, and tight pants. And, and like really ridiculous. cowboy hats, you know, metrosexual cowboy hats. And it's really ridiculous. It, it's, it's really ridiculous. And also Jenna Fisher from The Office in this. Yeah, she's in it. And uh, also another... Um, <laughs> I, I want to uh, say... Uh, oh, oh, what's, what's his name? The one who's married to Amy Poehler. Uh, Will Arnett. Will Arnett was yeah, in this. Yeah, they're both in this. Yeah, yeah they're, they were and brother Jennifer, and sister. Yeah, and like, but they're in love with each other in the movie, yeah. which is kind of weird. Yeah, they, they, they did that, that uh, uh, skate that was that was for Kennedy and Marilyn Monroe. Oh, yeah, and they started like, giving the Heimlich maneuver? Yeah, it's like she died, like she oh, dies, and oh, it, it was funny. It was, it was a good one. Yeah, I, I don't know. This feels almost like an Adam McKay <laughs> film. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, it was hilarious. yeah, Adam McKay is the director of... Uh, Anchorman, mm -hmm. and, and it feels like one of the movies he did. I think it's just because Will Ferrell's in it. Yes. But it just feels like that kind of tone, the Step Brothers tone, that uh, I, I really dig. That Will Ferrell's just so good at. It's just 
slightly below realistic, but still real. You know, like it could you feel like this happens. Like, 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 he's, like he's a real, he could be a real moron out there. And it's like a really just kind of you know basic premise and like a cliche yeah. premise. Two thousand eight. Yeah, man. So uh, ten, ten years, years old. old. God. At the very end, they do. Uh, I've already seen this in theaters. Yeah, I know it's been so long, but um, but yeah, I mean th this one. I think this one holds up. Have you guys seen Blade to Glory? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Andrew's giving me the thumbs up back there in the studio. Have either as Mr. Beard and Mr. Darkens? Um, have you guys seen it? I, I, I watch every Will Ferrell movie that comes out. I've seen Bits and Pieces. Positive. Bits and Pieces. See. I like they, um, mm. Do you think this we, is Will Ferrell's best movie? No. No? What's his best movie? Step Brothers. Not the Roxbury. No. Oh, no, not, not the Roxbury. We're going we're gonna to shut that one down The other right guys. Now. The other guys. No, that was wrong, too. Uh, uh, I'm going to have to say. Drew say his best movies are Anchorman and Elf. I really like him in the first Zoolander. I say Elf and Step Brothers. The ladies, man. I like him in the first Zoolander. He's uh, funny. He, Mugantu is okay. I like Step Brothers. But, um, Step Brothers is really funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it, but um, but this one's just such like a quirky, funny tone. Entertainment worldwide. Yeah, Th this one, um, <laughs> uh, this one just strikes a tone in between somewhere in between like the quirky slapstick and to like a real, just kind of like basic mm -hmm. story. And there's a lot of cliched elements in there, but I mean, Will Ferrell and John Heater just perform so well together. I don't think it matters. But yeah, it's one of the best winter sports movies I can think of. It's it's funny. It's yeah. only the few good ones I can the think. Few, the, proud, the winter sports <laughs> movies that are actually I know fast unless we wanted to be like sports. Ice Princess or something like that from 2005 with Michelle Trachtenberg. But That's how you pronounce her name. Michelle Trachtenberg, yeah. Oh, okay, she's really cute. I, I've been mispronouncing that name. Wrong. You you just call her Euro Trip Girl. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I just tell Scott Scotty doesn't know girl. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, she's in that music video. God, he doesn't know. But, um, God, he doesn't know. but guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, yeah, next uh, next week we're actually going to be reviewing oh, Annihilation oh, on oh, Quick Flicks. Annihilation. Ooh. Directed, what? Written and directed by Alex Garland. Alex Garland direct, uh, wrote 28 Days oh. Later and directed and wrote Ex Machina from um, two years ago, two or three years ago. I two think. years ago. And also, Quick Flicks tomorrow, we're going to be reviewing Black Panther. Black Panther, you don't say. Uh, well, I did. I did say. You don't say. I did. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I had a lot of fun. Hunter, Chris, Benignum. thank you so much for all your commentary. Um, do you have anything else to add? The your eyes just shifted because I said commentary weird. The I know that. I just hope everybody has a wonderful Africa. Thursday. The oh, no, that, that's, that ship's already sailed, Except buddy. for you. <laughs> You're so late. I know. I've had a miserable one. Mm -hmm. But uh, Chris, anything to add? No? You gonna stay quiet on the issue? I'm going to start calling you Big Beard and Smaller Beard. Is that okay? Is that, yeah. Yes, you, Smaller Beard. How about... Chris is looking at me and is like, am I the Smaller Beard? How about yes, Support you're the smaller 1 and beard. Support 2? I'm going to start thing? calling you something I can't say on the air. Oh. <laughs> 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 okay, I think we're going to leave it at that. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Isaac Anderson. Just call him Support 1 and Support 2. No, 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 no. 1, 2. How Racist? No. Guys, thank you so much. He's Tyler, that's Hunter, that's Chris. Stay lovely.